Hello everyone, welcome to The Gourmet Gentleman, where we are learning how to eat, drink, and dress for the glory of God. Today we're making the martini cocktail, and I'll be suggesting some food, menswear, and a few songs to round out your experience. The recipe is quite simple. It's just gin, dry vermouth, and orange bitters. We'll start by adding two ounces of London dry gin to a mixing glass. Then we add half an ounce of dry vermouth. Then throw in a few dashes of orange bitters and mix it up. Serve it up in a pre-chilled cocktail glass. A lot of people garnish their martini with an olive on a pick, which is fine. I prefer a lemon peel, which was the garnish specified in the original recipe. Express those oils over the drink. Rub the peel around the rim of the glass, and then lay it on the edge of the glass for a garnish. And there's your martini cocktail. There's just nothing quite like a well-made martini. There are two main issues that always come up when discussing the martini. The base spirit and the method employed for mixing the drink. As far as I can find out, the recipe for a drink called the martini was first printed in Perry Johnson's new and improved bartender's manual. The ingredients were gum syrup, which is simple syrup thickened with gum arabic, bitters, orange curacao, and equal parts old tom gin and vermouth garnished with lemon peel. The type of vermouth was not specified. As with many cocktails of this era, a customer could order the martini sweet or dry, which would determine whether sweet, also known as Italian vermouth, or dry, also known as French vermouth, would be employed. By 1923, the martini had been simplified to just three ingredients. The gum syrup was removed, London dry gin replaced Old Tom gin, French vermouth was specified with a ratio of one-third vermouth to two-thirds gin, and rather than using curacao, the orange flavor was supplied by orange bitters, although the recipe stated that Angostura bitters could be substituted as well. This recipe appears in many of the cocktail manuals of the 1920s and 30s. The modern substitution of vodka for gin came decades later when gin fell out of fashion for a time. But in my opinion, the only drink that can be truthfully called a martini is some version of this gin and vermouth recipe. In regards to the method of mixing, it is generally accepted today that the martini should be stirred. The rule of thumb is, if the cocktail includes opaque ingredients, such as citrus juice, it should be shaken. Whereas, if it is made entirely of transparent ingredients, such as the martini, it should be stirred. Most people assume that the shaken martini was created by Ian Fleming in his James Bond novels, but many of the movies from the 1930s actually show the martini being shaken. In fact, in the 1934 movie The Thin Man, William Powell's character specifies shaking for the Manhattan and the martini, both of which would normally be stirred today. According to the ABCs of Mixing Cocktails from 1923, Barflies and Cocktails from 1927, and the Savoy Cocktail Book from 1930, the martini should be shaken. I still prefer to stir it, but it turns out, if you prefer your martini shaken, you're on solid historical ground. The martini is a simple cocktail with delicate flavors, so I would pair it with Emmental cheese. Emmental is a type of Swiss cheese that has a mild, somewhat nutty flavor that's subtle and a little savory. It complements a good martini perfectly. The martini is simple and elegant, and it fits well with a variety of occasions, but a formal event is really where it shines. So for today's menswear suggestion, I would go with formal wear while drinking my martini. That means a tuxedo or white tie and tails for the evening, or morning wear or a stroller suit during the daytime. For a comprehensive guide to formal menswear, check out the link in the description to the guide provided by the Gentleman's Gazette. I'm suggesting two songs to go with the martini. The first one is At Last by Kenny G and Arturo Sandoval. At Last was written for the 1941 musical Sun Valley Serenade, which featured the Glenn Miller Orchestra. At Last was recorded by the Glenn Miller Orchestra several times and has become a classic jazz standard beloved by many fans of the genre. If you appreciate jazz at all, you've probably already heard of Kenny G, who has been known for his solo saxophone since the early 80s. This version of At Last, a duet between Kenny G and the trumpet player Arturo Sandoval, is simply sublime, just like a well-made martini. 
Our second song for today is Tuxedo Junction, which was released in 1939 and is another classic jazz standard covered by many swing and jazz artists. The most popular recording was also by the Glenn Miller Orchestra, but my favorite version is by the BBC Big Band. I've included links to the recommended recordings of At Last and Tuxedo Junction in the description, so check them out and put them on in the background as you enjoy your own martini to the glory of God. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, check out our channel for more videos like this, and thanks for watching.